where credit is due the seventh fleet presentation to the uss hector Vice Admiral J.R. Hogg, Commander 7th Fleet, paid Hector a visit on the morning of 13 July 1984 to formally recognize our achievements throughout this Westpac and present us with a humanitarian award. Please stand at ease. Captain Chapel, officers and sailors, men and women of USS Hector. It's really a privilege for me to be with you today because you were culminating an outstanding 7th Fleet deployment. And I can tell you that as the 7th Fleet commander, there's no ship that's deployed here in the 14 months that I've had command that I could have more reason to be proud of and to take an opportunity like today to physically come on board and tell you how I feel about you. So I want to take a few minutes to discuss what you've done. You've been exemplary in your fleet repair service. Somebody took the time to count them up, and the figure I have is that you have conducted repairs for some 45 ships and shore stations during your deployment to the Seventh Fleet, which commenced on 11 February 1984 and completes later this month. That's a lot of repair services in a short period of time. It included five locations in the Western Pacific and the Indian Ocean, it included some 70,000 man-hours of repair work and 10,000 man-hours of support services. Let me highlight a few things that others in the fleet will not forget. USS Chandler's generators, the Spillian's made feed pump, Wabash's JP-5 cargo pump, the Tiger team that you sent to Bahrain to take care of Luce's boiler. The Tiger team you sent to Australia not to have liberty, but to take care of Schofield's boilers. I can tell you that the other ships here in the waterfront in Yokosuka won't forget about you either because you came up here in a period of very high loading of ships. In fact, we've had more ships and sailors here in Yokosuka in the last two weeks than we've had in the last 10 years, with some 10,000 sailors and Marines up here and a large number of capital ships. You came here especially because of that high loading, and you contributed significantly to the material condition of the ships that otherwise would have had to go without. You didn't just involve yourself in repair work while you were going from point to point getting ready for your next repair event, you were very busy in conducting other missions and contributions to the fleet. For example, you were an Orange Raider in Team Spirit 84. You conducted the first tender exercise in the Seventh Fleet. And while some might not appreciate it, you conducted the first real-world evaluation of our Haven project in the Seventh Fleet. While you were anchored in Chinhei, your anchorage site was selected carefully so that we could see if your radar blip would be masked because of certain geographic phenomena. And uh, your operations department and CTF 75, 73 worked very hard to figure that out 
and provide very fine results to Seventh Fleet. Your intelligence reporting on Soviet ships transiting the Malacca Strait were excellent. And the record book will show that on two separate occasions, you provided very significant humanitarian services to those in need from other countries. It kicked off with the tremendous support that you provided in disaster relief in the wake of a tropical typhoon for Diego Suarez and the Malagasy Republic. I can assure you that the people there will never forget Hector, and if they forget the name of the ship, they won't forget the names of those friendly faces and those men and women who came ashore and jacked them up. You not only made physical contributions to the country, but in so doing, you brought those people to life. And while not as much of a physical effort for you, your relief, your recovery of the Vietnamese refugees, some 28 refugees in the South China Sea, was equally important in humanitarian terms. I'm sure you know now that you've experienced that refugee pickup that they leave Vietnam totally desperate. I've seen them leave Vietnam knowing they did not have enough food and water and medical supplies to get even halfway to the nearest land location. They are making the hope and the assumption that somebody, some friend will pick them up because uh, they will perish otherwise. But the situation must be so desperate in Vietnam for those who choose freedom that they would rather take the risk of dying at sea than to continue on in Vietnam. There's also the risk that uh, they will be recovered, rescued by a group of people not nearly as hospitable as the US Navy ships in the Seventh Fleet. I'm sure that in more cases than not, they're picked up by pirates and by unfriendly people who ravish them and beat and murder them. And I've seen many intelligence reports to that effect. So you can understand why when they looked up at the friendly faces of the troops on board USS Hector that uh, they had a sigh of relief and a smile on their faces. So all this in a six month period and you can then understand why I'm so impressed with USS Hector and why I wanted to be here today to present the Hector with the Commander 7th Fleet Unit Letter of Commendation. I would now like to have the Flag Lieutenant read the citation for the commendation. The Commander 7th Fleet takes pleasure in commending USS Hector, AR-7, for service as set forth in the following citation. For sustained superior performance. Excuse me. I'd like to have the crew come to attention, please, Executive Officer. Ship's company, attend. Hut. For sustained superior performance while deployed to the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans from February to July 1984, USS Hector provided exemplary fleet repair services to 46 ships and shore commands at five locations, including the remote anchorage at Masira, Oman. Through comprehensive work, planning, rapid response to emergent repairs, and unrelenting attention to quality control, USS Hector significantly enhanced the material readiness of 7th Fleet. Enthusiastic and innovative participation in Exercise Team Spirit 84, refueling at sea, and tactical and intelligence initiatives established precedents and, dis and demonstrated unparalleled versatility for a tender or repair ship. USS Hector's humanitarian efforts in providing short notice disaster relief at Diego Suarez, Malagasy Republic promoted better understanding and improved relations between the United States and a seldom visited country. Through their diligence, resourcefulness, and unstinting dedication, the officers, men, and women of USS Hector reflected great credit upon themselves 
and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Signed, James R. Hogg, Vice Admiral, United States Navy. Captain, I would now like to present you the official letter that uh, goes with this citation. This is not a medal that you wear in your chest. This is a letter of commendation to the ship and each member of the command at the, for the time frame uh, will be then awarded the letter by, letter by the commanding officer of the ship to be placed in your official jackets. Congratulations. Thank you, Admiral. Now I would like to continue on to award the ship with the Humanitarian Service Medal for the Operation Boat People Rescue. Do you have it uh, for Diego yet? No, sir, we haven't received that, but I'm sure we will. Now there will be a second Humanitarian Service, humanitarian service Medal that will be coming forth for your operation in Diego Suarez. This entails a ribbon that you actually wear on your uniform and those of you who were on board for both events for the boat rescue and the Diego Suarez effort will have a star on that ribbon. So I congratulate you all on that performance and I now will present your captain with the documentation, the papers that document this award and these will become a part of your official records. Yeah, no citation here, yes, sir. I understand, yes, sir. Now, please stand at ease again, because I want to say a few more words to the captain and to all the crew of this great ship. You've done an outstanding job. This is not a new ship, but she's maintained her capability through hard work and a lot of professional dedication by every one of you. You performed magnificently here in the 7th Fleet, and because of that, you've gained the respect and the recognition of the entire Navy, from the senior CNO on down through your type commander and the 7th Fleet commander, your task force commander, who, by the way, sent you a very fine message this morning, Commodore Butcher, that you will be seeing soon. So your, your efforts have reflected very favorably at all levels in the Navy and within the State Department because of your very fine efforts in Diego Suarez. What I've expressed this morning in these two awards is some tangible recognition for your efforts. But the real feeling of success that you have in your own minds and hearts is what you will really take away from this. And you can leave the 7th Fleet knowing that you have contributed individually and as a group in a very significant manner to the national interests of the United States and of course to the U.S. Navy and the 7th Fleet. And that's what you can take away. So feel very proud about that because you have done a very fine job. And you have my professional respect and my personal admiration as you proceed on to further operations in the Third Fleet. So thank you very much. You're an outstanding ship, and it's a pure pleasure for me to be on board to tell you just that. Thank you. Ship's Company, Etienne Hutt.